You can predict where the future is going. You can predict how companies are going to scale and grow. And the fact that you're ahead of this, and especially being in the States, like, dude, the future is so insane. So if somebody wants to be a part of something really big picture, this is an amazing time. I don't get what I want. I get what I need. Every single day I'm heading off to my dream, and I get everything that I damn well please. I don't give a damn if you all listen to me, because I'm running. I'm the only one. Hey, guys. Welcome to the One Percenter Podcast. I'm here today with my brother, Derek. I'm going to tell you something super cool. Number one, he's here with his family, all his kids. They're just amazing. This, th his family is amazing. Greatest people I've ever met. But I'm going to tell you, he does something really cool with business. Really cool. Matter of fact, I've never had anybody before that I've met that makes robots. So number one, like I'm not even sure exactly how he got started. And we started telling me, I said, whoa, bro, I know a lot about you. I know what you're doing now. I know you're extremely successful. I know the stuff that you does, do helps so many companies. But let's save the backstory for the podcast. You guys know every single day, my goal is to bring you as much value as I can. Dude, a lot of you, you never know what you're going to do in the future. And matter of fact, you never know who you're going to end up even working with. Derek right now, and I've, I've, I've shared this. I put a link in the description box below, but he's actually looking. I have a very big sales community. Um, he's actually looking for a few salespeople to help sell these robots at insane earning opportunities, quick paydays, help massive companies, big revenue streams, amazing leaders, and an, a killer organization that's going through the moon. So today, as Derek tells a story, if you're like, man, dude, I want to be with a company like that, you guys can go down to the description box, you guys can click on that link, and you guys can get connected with Derek. But most importantly, Derek, today, you never know where you're going to end up. I bet when you were younger, you didn't think when I'd be older, I'm going to be building robots, right? No, I thought I would be working in my family's business, which is totally different today than when it was. Cool. So I want to know that because this is the journey. This is the journey of life, okay? And he's super successful. He's got an amazing family. And he's in a journey right now, 3.0, Derek, changing his life again, um, not only in business, but just in all these other areas. So it's super cool that I'm with him right now. And I want him to share with you some stuff that you're really going to learn. And uh, let's just drop it. Like, Derek, number one, where are you yeah. from? Uh, tell us a little bit about you. Number, And tell us about your business currently. And then let's go back to how you got to where you are now. Sure. No, that's great. My name is Derek DeGeest. I'm president of DeGeest Corporation and Lesta USA, which is interesting because DeGeest Corporation is a third generation company. So we've been in business will be next year, 50 years. Mm. So I come from a, a legacy family business that I now run, but also I'm an entrepreneur president of our new of our new automation division, which is something that was born out of a need that we needed to keep our company going. Mm -hmm. And now we're disrupting an entire industry and became a leader in something that, and it didn't even exist before we brought it in. So and amazing. When that's that's a robot. Talk to too, us about so. that. Yeah, so uh, Lesta USA is a self learning robot, and what it does is it works with painters, it works with people. So in manufacturing. Uh, you have to fabricate parts, you have to weld them and build them, and then you have to paint them. Whether it's wood, whether it's metal, anything you have, you have to make the pieces, you got to put it together, and then you got to finish and paint it. There's a lot of amazing equipment and technology and automation in building the pieces, and then they're starting to get better at some of the welding and put them together, but there's very little solutions for the finishing side. And what's the reason that's so important is because we see it all over all over the world right now. There's no, no one, or where's no one to work? Like in the U.S., we have uh, we have 9.5 million open jobs and only 6.5 million people unemployed. Mm -hmm. And right now, today, there's 10,000 baby boomers retiring every day. So this huge it's group crazy. of people is leaving the industry. People coming in, and the people coming in, they have higher expectations of what they want. You know, they're watching shows like this. Like I want to. I want to do great things, and I don't want to just go be a blue-collar manufacturer. I don't want to build stuff that the, the, the thought is that manufacturing is a dirty and blue-collar environment. I want to be educated, and that's not a place for me to go, which is totally wrong. When the companies that are doing it right, it's freaking amazing. Yeah. There's more money going into manufacturing than about any other industry because they're using technology because – it's like in the GDP, it's like a it's like a three trillion dollar business right mm -hmm. now. Just for per year, the thirteen million people work in manufacturing. So it's a huge thing. So there's so much money in it because it's everything that we do. It's just a huge driver for, for our country. So we have to be able to produce and so we need to manufacture. Mm -hmm. And so what we did is we I am a manufacturer, so we're in this industry, and we needed a solution. We went out and found the self learning robots because it didn't exist. It was not available in the U.S. Uh, and it just it was a really neat story how we came about it. We brought it here. 
we brought it in, we introduced, we educated the market, and now we're putting these in companies all over the country. So we've got- Who, who, our, who are your clients? Uh, if somebody yeah. is watching this and they're like, how do I know if I need one of these? Wh yeah. Who are those clients? You bet. So like there's tier one automotive. So everyone knows like where you build cars. There's a site called that tier one automotive. And then there's everybody else. Mm -hmm. So if you own a company and you build stuff that you paint or you use powder coat or you use paint liquid equipment with, if you do anything in that environment, we can help you. Because we have solutions for, for powder, for liquid, for furniture companies. Mm -hmm. We do stuff in the metal side for fabricating really big parts to small parts. And if you make something, if you finish it, we brought technology to the U.S., not just robots, but other companies in Europe said, We've been successful of helping the U.S. and they want to bring their stuff over. They're contacting me and our company is helping bring other technologies to help manufacturing in the mm -hmm. U.S. Because manufacturing has to survive here in the U.S. So, I mean, those, those are the type of companies. So, any general industry customer, coding companies, custom coders, fabricators, OEMs that have their own products, usually they're struggling to keep their paint lines running. Mm -hmm. And they can't sell products if you don't put paint on it. It doesn't look pretty. So. How, how does someone uh, reach out to you, ask a question or something like that? Yeah, I mean, if you'd like to find out more, lestausa.com. How do you spell that? L-E-S-T-A-U-S-A.com. Lestausa.com. You go to our website in the upper corner. It says request more information. You can click that and someone can, will get back to you right away. And you can look on site there. We got all kinds of different just information, content, Your videos products. all over the place on there of companies yeah. we've helped. I love it. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Andy. A lot of you leave comments telling me that you need help. Do me a favor. I'm going to tell you the best way to get a hold of me. Shoot me a text message right now, 918 210 0254. 918 210 0254. I'll help you with whatever you need. I got your back for life. Let's get back to the video. The reason why I think this is so important for us, to, even if you don't even care about, about manufacturing, you have nothing to do with it, it's mm -hmm. still important for every single individual that would listen to this podcast because it's going to affect everything that we do in the future. And we're at a really pivotal point right now in this country because we have pivoted away from building stuff on our own. We don't build stuff anymore. We're a service company country uh -huh. you know so it's cheaper to go overseas right so it's just cheaper it's fine cheap labor so everyone's trying cheap labor we ship everything off to china well then COVID happens and oh shit now we can't get stuff anymore right uh -huh. so now we're like we now we couldn't get stuff everything is so expensive you couldn't get things the company is like all right we need to bring it back we need to bring reshore well we haven't been producing or and investing in manufacturing in the u.s we're, we're trying but the government really is using big companies and manufacturing to be able to tax more and to be able to mm -hmm. leverage other things other countries, I travel the world to be able to see and work on manufacturing. In Europe, they're decades ahead of us in technology for manufacturing. They're, they're investing. The countries are helping them invest in doing it. And so we're behind. And in China, that's like a whole other scary thing. So they have a thing called Made, 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 by, uh, made in China of 2025. They have a major Chinese initiative investing just tons, pouring money into manufacturing. And their main goal is to dominate world domination of industrial manufacturing control the whole thing so that happens and if we can't build something and they and they win and they have all the manufacturing because we say it's cheaper mm -hmm. look what happens when we shut down um pumping oil and we just said it's cheaper to get overseas mm -hmm. what happened when we were a unable to build a producer on oil what happened to our gas prices mm -hmm. freaking went through the roof right and we could do nothing about it mm -hmm. so it's super important just for our own freedom of our country and to, for our freedom as individuals That's to make crazy. sure that we got to be able to build stuff and in u.s soil or we're going to be reliant on someone else and i freaking hate losing so like I you, hate know, you losing. hate losing, yeah, losing right sucks. sucks right so so that's why it's, it's so important that's why i'm passionate about it because it's, it's so important for the just the safety of our country and just as a as freedom of as a, as a country and individuals and so and i happen to own a manufacturing company our family does yeah and you know i was always like let's do more let's push more let's really get after it um, and then I said, well, I want to help our people, mm -hmm. you know, so three generations of people, you know, I grew up in, in doing that. And I said, so, but I found out it's so much more than just helping our people. If I don't help the industry, if I don't help uh, in what I've learned and share that with other mm -hmm. companies, it won't matter what we do in our little bubble because there won't be other manufacturers around and we got nothing to build. So that's right. What, what is your family's manufacturing business? What is it? So it's called DeGeese Corporation. Okay. And so we're, we're a contract job shop. So we actually fabricate and build the components, metal components that go into other large equipment. So mm. we'll be in agricultural, we'd make stuff for mining, we make stuff for, for roads and so um, utilities. So pretty much everything that we use everywhere, 
it's getting manufactured by something and we wow. do a lot of big equipment a lot of things that we're, we're making the roads that you're on the food that you eat the electricity that you mm -hmm. have all those things are put in by pieces of you know, equipment that we make so how did you get into this my grandpa started it. so he was actually a welder in the navy mm -hmm. and so you know, when he got out of the navy he wanted he, he used the skill he learned when he was serving and so then he went to work for a manufacturer in sioux falls south dakota where we're from and then, so he did that for a long time, running the plant. And then he said, eventually, you know, I don't want to retire, but I don't want to do this anymore. So he opened up a small shop in a little garage in Sioux Falls with him and my grandma. Mm -hmm. My dad started a year after. They like they made they designed made some different trailers and different equipment. And then that company that he worked for called him and said, Hey, will you make some parts for us? And so he said, Sure, I'll make some parts. So then we started contracting work for them, and we started fabricating and growing, wow. and then just kept kept growing. And so, and then, you know, I, as I was growing up, you know, then I wanted to join, my dad works there and he's worked there from the beginning. Uh, and, and I wanted, I wanted to get in there at 12, mm -hmm. I could start mowing and like, it'd be around the shop. And mm -hmm. then at 16, it was the age I could legally start working in the shop. And that was like the rite of passage. Like I wanted to get in there and build mm -hmm. stuff, yeah. you know? So, so I got to start working there part time. And then as uh, working there, you know, uh, we were always known like we were we were better than like we were the best. Like mm -hmm. our group was we were a small group. We worked could outwork anyone. Mm -hmm. Never had a website. Never and people knew that we did good work. We grew with our comp the companies that we're at. Mm -hmm. Some of our companies we've been with for now are over forty five years. It's like wow. they never left. So that was what we did. And then as we were growing, we were getting bigger and bigger. And, and then I came back after college. Came back full time. Went back in the shop wiping down tanks, painting, fabricating. I just worked out in the shop for many years. And then I started doing our software side and, and ERP. We moved to a bigger building, like we're gonna grow. My brother was coming to join the business. Alicia, my wife was gonna mm -hmm. join the business. Like we gotta grow. So we doubled the size, bought a new building. We moved in and we're like, Let, we're gonna do this. And I was like 2014, I think somewhere like 15, somewhere mm -hmm. around there is when we moved in. And some critical thing happened that changed and that it really put us into a, a bind is that we could not work technology or cheap labor anymore. It got to a point where we couldn't beat that. And so that was, that was a real key change. Like we have to adapt now. Our old model that worked and we got so comfortable and didn't work anymore because you can't outwork faster equipment. You know? No way. Faster equipment can, it just keeps getting more expensive and it's growing faster and faster. Technology is growing. And in our area, we have uh, colonies around and they actually um, would, would farm. And then they bought some lasers when they weren't farming and they put a laser in their barn and they started cutting parts. And then our, uh, we had in our state prison, they actually opened up a cool program to teach us skills. So they learned mm -hmm. welding and machining. And so these other companies are like, oh wait, hold on. I can buy parts in a dirt barn, ship them to a state prison and have a welding labor weld mm -hmm. them. And then that's now the weldment that we had to compete against. Mm -hmm. And so here we're in this, huge building we all these people that have been here for 20 20 20 30 years plus you know huge tenure yeah. and i'm supposed to be the third generation coming in to do everything my grandpa and my dad did and we're like uh oh what are we going to do so i said well we're not freaking backing down we're going to do it better i said we're going to multiply the efforts of our people and we're going to figure out how to outsmart them we can't just outwork them we're hard workers but we're going to beat cheap labor so we had to beat cheap labor before cheap labor was a big thing you know everyone was really thinking about it so we started doubling down. We started developing our own software to multiply our efforts in our office. We started investing in our automation out in our fab side. We got our first welding robot. Our first welding robot turned into another, a second, a third. Mm -hmm. And so we're very automated. And then we moved to the point where like, okay, so we fabricated, we have everything streamlined and now we're at paint. All right, all right now we're gonna, we're gonna automate paint now. So we go talk to the robot companies in the US and they're like, uh, well, I talked to all the big ones, you know, the Fanic, ABB, Moscow, Motorman, and we said, and they're like, well, you have, you have way too many parts. Like, you, you can't do this. Because again, this is back, automotive does this. If you're mm -hmm. making tens of thousands of something, you can do it. But if you got over a thousand different parts, mm -hmm. <laughs> it would take you months to make programs. Like, you'll never be able to use it. I'm like, well, yeah. I'm like, well, we can't stop. What are we going to do? We got to keep going. So I said, uh, they said, well, that's what we do. We're the biggest. I'm like, well, good for you, but that's not going to help us. And so mm -hmm. we actually left ejected. And then one of our, one of our automation team found seven pages down on YouTube, this company called Lesta in Italy. And we mm -hmm. were going to get another welding robot. And this is about 2017. And I said, well, we're going to be over there. And I said, I saw this self-learning stuff where they're just working with their painters. You know, it's really cool. I'm like, well, this is, this is amazing. I've never heard of this thing. It must not be true. Take me to your customers. 
He's like, great, come on over. So we came over there. We took small, small two-man shops or actually about 10-man shops to huge companies were using what I was told was impossible. Mm. It blew my mind. I'm like, we got to do this. And so I'm flying back, and he's like, we'd love, we'd love to come to the U.S. We're just thinking about going. We need a partner to do it. You can get me in touch with someone there who sells paint equipment or does paint stuff, and we'll, we'd like to come, and we can help you if you can find that. I'm flying home, and I'm thinking, I'm like, God. I said that we've done really cool things in our shop. We had over, in 2016, we had over 600 people tour our facility. No website. We're not promoting anything that we're doing, but word of mouth, they knew we were doing, and we had nothing to sell. How do, how do they know? How do they find out? Just about word this? of mouth. They knew that we were using automation in ways other people weren't. We were just small enough, and and uh, and my dad either believed in me or I just didn't take no enough that I just was doing it, mm-hmm. and we could move quickly, and so we became our own our little R and D environment, and we were and we were being successful in it. And I said, God, someday, when people come to our facility, like we have to have something to sell. Mm-hmm. And so I'm like, all right, well we've we have made our own software, we've fabricated and we've integrated a welding robot before. What if, why can't we do weld, painting robots? What if we become the integrator and we'll sell them? And so, you know, I called him back as soon as I landed, the owner in Lester, his name is Emmanuel. Mm-hmm. And I said, Emmanuel, I got this crazy idea. I said, you need someone not just to sell the equipment. We're going to build this system right in the middle, in the heart of the USA, right in South Dakota, right in the middle. Yeah. And so people are going to come from everywhere. We're going to build something that's never been done in, on, on the, the continent. Mm-hmm. And so people are going to come. I said, and why, why have a, a local regional painter? We need to help all of this country. I said, we know done software, we fabricate, we can fabricate, build all the parts in house, we can integrate and we can do them. He's like, Derek, we love this crazy idea. So we're like, all right, so we figured out a partnership. Legally, it shouldn't even have been possible, we did, but we became almost best friends. Mm-hmm. And uh, we have full control so we can protect and help our customers. So we, we opened up less to USA or the or DBA part of our DeGeese Corporation. Mm-hmm. And now we have Fabricate, our Fabricate and Steelworks Division, and Automation and Finishing. So we have three main service divisions of our company. Uh, it was a train wreck when we started. Mm-hmm. Nothing never been done. The industry when, didn't when, know how when, to do when it. When did you start that? We launched, we built our line in 2018, and we launched in 2019 mm-hmm. at, at a huge trade show. Like, I'd, I'd gone to a trade show with, like, 50,000 people come to these big trades. And then to go to the show was, like, a big deal. My, I could only afford it. My dad, like, only let me go once. You know, it was a big deal just to go. And then here is I am, like. Is your dad still involved? Yeah, he's, right. he's half retired, and he half wants to keep working. He loves it too much is what he knows how to do. I love so that. He, uh, he helps out a little uh, around and helps quote and, and do some other things. And my grandpa died quite a long time when I was young. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so my dad had to take it over and on his own and figure out how to make it work. And he really innovated and grew it. And then he got to a comfortable level. And then we came in, and now we're, now we're blowing it up. I love that. So, do, do you guys sell robots overseas? No, nope, so just in yeah, the just in the we, we were concentrating on USA and in Canada. We're starting to go into Canada, and we're starting to dabble in Mexico. So pretty much all of the North American continent. We're we heavily got done it. U.S. right now, helping companies. And really what makes it so unique about our products is because we became an integrator that uses what we sell in a production environment. Mm-hmm. I don't know that that's really ever been done before, and I've never met Can another integrator. That, what that means? Yeah, so an integrator is someone that takes automation, and then they, they put it together, and they give it to somebody. Mm-hmm. So typically, uh, integrators, they know robots, or they know like uh, automation electronics, and they'll put mm-hmm. something together and that will fulfill like a, a task or a purpose, and then the company's got to figure out how to make it work. So normally this went to really big companies who have legions of engineers and they have project managers and people that do it. So most automation has been in really huge tier one big companies. And then there's hundreds and hundreds of thousands of other general industry manufacturers Mm. that don't have access, that don't have a way to be able to apply this technology to what they're doing. Now they can't find people. Now they, they're they having a hard time keeping going. And now the country's like, hey, we should make more. And these big companies are like, we need mm. more from you. And if these companies can't keep going, the big ones can't find the work. And yeah. then they ship their work overseas, and now we don't have jobs. Hey, guys, sorry for interrupting the video. Listen to me. He's looking for a couple reps right now that want to make a lot of money, a level 10 earning opportunity, that want to work for a really cool company, a really cool organization, and for a kick-butt leader. Okay, if that's you and you're looking for an opportunity based on what he's talking about, you're like, dude, this is interesting. I would love to be on the front end sales of that and help grow and build this company. You guys can go down in the description box below and you're going to see a little box that says click here for for your earning opportunity to join their team. Basically, you're going to answer some questions. You're going to send a 60 second video so they can put a name with the face within 24 hours. They're going to reach out to you. This is an opportunity of a lifetime. 
He's looking for a few people. I don't care if you're younger. I don't care if you're older. If you believe in this product and you want to help them grow this company, this is your opportunity. Let's get back to the video. So That's it's great. super important to figure out. So our solutions, what's so unique about what we're doing is because we use these solutions in the production environment, we are the kind customer. You know, we've been them. We've been on their end, other end of being disappointed or given something. Oh, here's a robot that welds. Good luck. See yeah. you later. It, it, you hit the trigger. It does it. Well, there's so much other things to be able to make that work. And we've gone through the, the, the tough times of figuring it out and the, the, the crap, you know, to figure out how to make it work. So we don't just provide, here's a robot that paints. Good mm -hmm. luck. Here's What we do is we say, okay, we're going to give you help you with the fixtures. We're going to help tell you how to do it. We're going to help you with the processes. We've developed software around that. So then we're going to come there. We're going to put it in. We're going to integrate the same team that built it. We'll come train you how to use it, mm -hmm. and you'll be running production before we leave. It's, just so, ne it's not hurt. That's never been heard of. That's not, that's not typical. So a company right now, they have, let's say, a painter that paints parts, and they've been there for... 15, 20 years. Yeah. Obviously, they're getting tired. Right. Right. They get wore down. They literally, most of the time, uh, can't stay consistent to keep spraying all day because it's a lot of work, right? Like when it's like, tough. Job. Like I've seen the, the 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 robots you guys have. I mean, it's insane. I mean, it's yeah. a lot of in depth work, and these yeah. people are doing it by hand. Yeah. Shoulders, arms, back, it's body, killing. everything. Yeah. Bodies are breaking down. Yeah. And there's awesome, amazing people out there. And, and they're trying to keep them as long as they can. They know they're not going to find another one that's going to work for 10, 15 years to learn that skill to that level. Mm -hmm. They're doing everything they can to hold on. And these painters are like, well, you can't do that very often until you retire. So yeah, there's a certain level you break down. I bet down, there's a lot of turnover it. in this Huge. industry. And they can't right? find it. Yeah, it's terrible. So if a business owner is watching this right now and they're like, man, you know, I want one of these robots to do this, they ask some questions. A lot of the times, people don't lay off all their people when they get these robots. No. What they do is that they they have some of them actually help run the robots. Am I right? Yeah. Well, you, and you, yeah, For, I mean, you take you make a career out of a job. So when so if you have a well, painter, like you if you, you have a, a painter, a job. yeah, if you mm -hmm. have a painter, and they're good, we you we need to help them because our goal is to keep them as long as we can. Mm -hmm. So we talked about not having the, enough people to come in. So we every all of our solutions, we have to use technology to augment what we're doing today. Mm -hmm. So one, to be able to save as much knowledge of your people, the skilled mm -hmm. people that you have, you need to save that before they're gone. And just so that you have that. And now if you have technology to go with that, that's what you the next generation wants to do. They'll mm -hmm. do work. There's hardworking people coming up that are entering the job yeah, force. Every they day. just want to see mm -hmm. that there's a career out, there's a path here, and that you can't, you can't do the... You can't do manual stuff old ways when there's better ways to do it. Facts. Because people are people are they don't have time for that anymore. There's mm -hmm. too many jobs. Why would I go bust my ass over here when I already know there's just saw it on YouTube. There's a better way to do this. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna do this right now. If they're not gonna invest in this, they're not gonna be investing in me. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna stay. I'll let's, go get a different job. Let's talk about ROI on these robots, can we? Yeah. Like, like you talk about well, it's huge. when somebody buys a robot, you were saying anywhere between six to nine months, usually ROI return on one. Yeah. The, w some of our, some of our coding technologies that we use to help make it easier for a painter. So we brought other, other stuff from Europe that helps, helps save on powder and liquid. So we can save up to 20 to 30% on their mm -hmm. coatings. Some of these people will spend millions and millions of dollars on this. Mm -hmm. And so we have a very cost effective way to be able to sell and help them put that in. It helps their painter make it easier for the painter on day one. We'll come in and put that in easier for your painter. Now your painter's happier. So it gives you a little more time with your painter, mm -hmm. right? So then now then we put our robot in, and now the robot comes in, and then the, the painter just teaches, he just paints a part, and it's teaching the robot in the same time. Mm -hmm. So the, the painter, the robot, is just the coolest thing to see. So like when we go put these in, um, and we put them in for, put these robots in, are mm -hmm. the painters, we train them what they do. At first they're like, yeah, this is crazy. I've never, I've never done anything like yeah. this. I can't touch it. You know, they're worried about touching it. You know, and eventually we show them how it is. Our application specialist shows them what to do, gets them in there and he paints a part and he starts going. So we actually just let him just keep painting with the robot. And he's yeah. like, all right, I got it, record it. And it's like, okay, so record it. He stops it and he gets out and he looks at it and just the look of amazement, like that's him. Perfection. Yeah, well, and that robot is him. It's like an extension of himself. Mm -hmm. So he didn't get replaced. He's just like, okay, now I can teach the robot how to do these parts so I don't have to stand in there all day. Mm -hmm. Why would I do this 500 times when I could show it once and I could come out and I could use my knowledge? They'll never get replaced because mm -hmm. that knowledge is irreplaceable. 
they need knowledge on the line, way more value than standing in the booth. So they come out and they're like, because these it, painters paint, you know, 10, 12 hours a day, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. Then you know, they, and these lines can't stop. Like, so they aren't stopping. So if you have to have a pee break, someone's got to come replace them to even go to the bathroom. So it mm. keeps going. It's wow. crazy what they do. But so if you do that, like we've had guys go home and say to, to their kids and their wife, he said, I'm a, I'm a robot programmer now. You know, it's yeah. the coolest, that's the coolest thing ever, right? And like, they changed from a, being a painter over to a robot programmer. I'm a programmer. robot programmer. And yeah. you guys teach cool. how these companies use these. Yeah, I mean, you talk I mean, about so ROI. It's not very complicated. No, like, it's, we don't need engineers. We don't need, we, we mm -hmm. just need their painter. And mm -hmm. our team will work with them. And then they call us to have a question. We work with them all the time. You know, and our lines are running. You know, that's the one thing you talk about in ROI, just like a peace of mind. Mm -hmm. It's like if you own a company, we own a company. We have a paint line. Before I had this, like I worried at, at six, you know, six between six and seven in the morning. Mm -hmm. If I had a phone call, like I was worried, like okay, I hope it's not Kevin. I hope it's not. I hope it's not Jamie. If if they're not here, I got a truck to fill tomorrow. And if they're not here to paint, like like it's your yeah, fundamental you're about reliability. Yeah, like your fear of like if my kid, if the kid's sick or if they're sick or yeah, yeah like or like if, if someone offered them a you know more more or, like they decide I don't want to do yeah. it anymore. Yeah, that's done. Yeah, I don't worry about that. Anymore. I think I want to say so. You got all these people, right? And especially in the painting field and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, and life happens. Like things happen. People get sick. Uh, somebody decides they wake up and they want to go do something else in life. Mm -hmm. And then literally the time it takes to teach someone to get up to speed, oh. you end up losing all of this money. Oh, yeah. Your quality goes to crap. Or, or, or your quality goes you, to crap. You can't yeah, you have somebody come in and they, they, they paint fast yeah. and they got to end up redoing everything and end up wasting all of this money. It's terrible. Right? And then everything I mean, they knew is gone. Like you're paying for them. You're think of it as like a you're burning your candle in the wick. When that's done and gone, and you're starting all over. You're starting all over at zero. So mm -hmm. as a company, I look at it as like you're building, you're stacking, right? Mm -hmm. And you're building to be able to get to the next level. If you are always just relying on the individual mm -hmm. over the process, mm -hmm. as soon as the individual is gone, you're, you're starting at zero again. And so you can never progress your company. There's a limit mm -hmm. of how far you can go. And finding individuals that are going to commit 10 to 20 years to do a manual job that, that has a better one, it's not, it's not possible anymore. Mm -mm. So, so it's, a, it's a huge critical thing, but it's really neat to see. All of our solutions are tied around saving the knowledge of your people that you have and using technology to help mm -hmm. present it to the next generation who then they can see a career opportunity. Mm -hmm. Like I used to tour, we tour kids elementary middle school high school kids around and i could see when i'd give tours around before we had this system in mm -hmm. and i'd worried about who was calling every day who was going to come in you know we would give tours we go through the welding area in the robots you know, we see the programmers engineers that are building stuff lasers are running really fast super cool they're like really didn't want to see and we get the paint side and i want to talk about the chemistries the cool mixes the ways things work mm -hmm. and they see a guy crawling around on his knees and in a whole suit like crawling around there they're mm -hmm. like starting to look around and like so i just like glazed it over you know so people weren't going into that anymore yeah now we put this line in and they, yeah these robots around our main painter who'd been an auto been an automotive and painted for us for a long time he's holding a touchscreen tablet watching the system clicking it around walking around overseeing it and sometimes he'll jump in and reteach a new part so i mean this the the just the, the honor of that knowledge being replayed in and like now he's got a career he could do it till he could do it till retirement, which I don't know. Our age, might, we might be seven years old before that gets to be. So yeah, I mean, they, so yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, you can do it. I mean, there's no end to what you can do. And then now, as these kids come in, they're like, "Holy cow, this is really cool!" You know. So if one main way that I know this works, so everyone where I go, there's uh, painters are looking to hire need people. We have a waiting list of industrial painters that want to work for us. Mm. I don't think you'll find another company in the country, except maybe the ones that we've helped give them lines mm -hmm. that that have uh, paper that especially they want to go. Yeah, and so these and guys this, are just and this waiting. Industry that you're in, this niche is pretty rare, right? I mean, of uh, building robots and, uh -huh. and integrating. Yeah, yeah we're the only ones uh, in North America that can do what we can do. Mm. There's some other people are trying to bring something in and trying to figure out how to do it. And and really like. We're not at odds in competing against anyone. And, and so other industrial robot companies mm -hmm. may think of us as a threat. And I'm like, no, like we have a tool that mm -hmm. fits, fits a niche of the market that is so important to our country that we actually complement other industrial robot companies. If we look back far enough, it said before we had paint robots, we had, we had about six welding, five, five welding robots at the time and no paint, no paint. So we, our automation stopped. 
So our scaling, remember I talked about our scaling of our mm-hmm. company stock because, because you didn't have pain we can't we can't manually do what you could automate here. So mm-hmm. once we automate it here, now the rest could grow. We doubled the amount of robots that we have now. Mm-hmm. And so like, hey, you want to sell more industrial robots? Help cheer us on because if we help give painting, we secure painting and finishing for these companies. The rest of their company, because the country needs it, will get to grow, and they're going to come buy more industrial robots from. Mm-hmm. Like so, we, we're, like we everyone should should love us. <laughs> and yeah, and well, and by the way, you're talking about people that come visit your facility. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And you said how many people? Well, it's like we have like the Disneyland of manufacturing now. So we, because we opened up this paint line, we have six of these self learning robots running all day long. We got welding robots all over. We made mm-hmm. solutions for welding now. Actually, we have uh, like to tell you about that. But we, so we produce what we built is a is a production showroom. So we give tours every week. Companies fly from all over the country to come in to be able to tour our place, and we make it like a little Disneyland experience. Wow. You come in, we, get, we tell them what we do, how we can help them, and then we find out where they're at. Like maybe, maybe your paint robot isn't what you need first. Like let's look at your processes, and let's make sure that we find sustainably put you in. So like, we have three-year plans with some large companies now mm-hmm. of where they want to get to and what they're buying today is to be able to help more of their people. To, mm-hmm. Again, how can I save my people as long as I can and get every, all the information out and be able to get that get that through. And we, we we've applied that to to our to our main facility too, where we fabricate parts and mm-hmm. we are aside. So we've developed, developed solutions. We have a rapid R and D environment. Our whole whole team that just develops new solutions uh, that we use. We mm-hmm. test them out, and when they work out well, two really cool things come from that. One, at at De Geest Corporation, if you work there, you use the best, most state of the art equipment on the planet. Awesome. Be- and some of the stuff no, no one else even has. And then we develop from there solutions that we can help other general industry and manufacturers. Mm-hmm. They can come in. They can see how we use it. I ain't going to sell it to them. We'll just show you what we do. If you think that could help you, then, then we'll help you do it. No, we'll so, get on it. So we actually have probably the most state-of-the-art welding, manual welding cells on the planet. We've done something in welding that's, that's going to be even, I think, as big disruptive as mm-hmm. what we did on the last side on the weld side. It's like, so we have just... Incredible opportunities coming uh, at Tegis Corporation, Lesta USA, and our whole job, we are engaging and helping manufacturers be successful in the U.S. and making sure that it's here for our country and, uh, and everyone that lives in it. So anybody watching right now, if they're like, hey, that's a product that I have questions on based mm-hmm. on their company, because a lot of, I mean, almost everybody has a company, yeah, right? Or they're yeah. working for a company and help blow that up. Right. Which they may think, hey, this would be good for my company. They go to what website and click on? Yeah. LestaUSA.com. Yeah, so, so Lesta. Yep. L-E-S-T-A-U-S-A.com. If you go there and you can see a lot of the different products, you can see our robots, and you can find applications close to you, or just click in the link in the upper corner. We have, we can call us right from, there's a number right on there, mm-hmm. or click a link, write a little bit about something. Hey, I'm really interested in this, and this is my company. Mm-hmm. Our, one of our team will give you a call. We'll start talking to see where you're at, what mm-hmm. your pain points are, and we'll help back down, work it down into some solutions that you could do like right now. Yeah, and, and there's and then financing to... options, right? I mean, for these robots, right? We talked yeah. about yesterday, there's yep. like zero down financing options. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, so a lot of companies don't have to actually leverage their cash. No, you don't have to do anything. Like if, if we have, if, if you're painting, if you have any type of painting powder finishing application, we mm-hmm. have something that could help you mm-hmm. be, able to, be able to help your people and help yourself. And yeah. with that, with our financing options now, you don't need any money. You got mm-hmm. six months, no payments. And, you could do a one sixty nine at the end of the year. You get a tax return, pay less than you're going to make on that, and we'll be saving you on your coatings mm-hmm. twenty to thirty percent on day one. Yeah, which should, I mean, you're you're making money. And uh, so, talk about that a little bit um, about some of the the needed help. Your computers, uh, the robots. I mean, but like the robot sales division that mm-hmm. you have right now. You have people that are coming in every day. They're demoing, you know, kind of an eye, with their eyes what's going on, yep. you know, what what solution they need help with, what problems are having in their company right now. Mm-hmm. You talked about consistency, you know, making sure that they can fulfill X amount of work each day. Yeah. Seems like, you know, if there's X amount of orders coming into these companies, they got to fulfill all of that work going out. And that means all those parts got to be painted. They got to be coated and all that stuff. Yeah. And human beings, when they're under stress workload every single day, that's usually when they break. And these computer, these uh, robots, they just don't ever slow down. No. You no. know, they're just hungry, hungry, hungry. So Bring people come on. in and check these out. And when they do inside your facility, um, they need to be able to talk to someone, right? To mm-hmm. be able to see, you know, hey, I need one robot. I need two. This is what I need. 
And so we're build, we're building this internal sales team that you're looking for this this culture. Yep. Right? Can you talk about yeah. what kind of culture you're looking for? Yeah. You have a great culture in your company, but adding into the sales division culture, what do you envision? Well, our we we really we talked we had that that badass swagger that we had go, go, coming up through all the years, and we mm-hmm. said we want to make sure we keep that as we grow. Mm-hmm. Like we interviewed everyone in our entire company, mm-hmm. and we said and we asked want to know what made them special, what they're proud of, what the things. And we boiled it all down. Alicia, my wife, does our marketing media relations. She's incredible. Mm-hmm. Fifteen years in the industry, she was a she was a killer. Yeah, she came in to help us out. So like we are we got firepower that we shouldn't have, mm-hmm. and so it's cool. But she. She boiled that down to a, coming out with her team to a, we call the stronger standard. And that's like on all of our clothes. Like we talk about there's no standards left in this country anymore. Yeah. We said, no, we're, we're going to make a stronger standard. And that's, that's, cool. where, that's everything we have built around is our, our brand. It's so it's about a stronger standard and how we're going to raise up our people, our processes, our industry, our community. Mm-hmm. Everything that we do is we're going to do better. And that's so that's awesome, the man. level that we take in, uh, in our company and our pride that we have in what we do. And we're looking for other people that want to be part of of doing something better, being a part of being a stronger standard, saying average sucks. Like I don't want to do that. Yeah. And then, and by doing this, I can help other people. I can help the industry that the skills I already know. Mm-hmm. Like I, I can help others too. So no, no matter where you're at in our company, and we, we're hiring for every, everything because we're we're blowing up on all three of our divisions right yeah. now. So if you do anything in manufacturing at all, uh, or if you know someone in welding, you want someone knows. I mean, we we're we're hiring all of them as we, we're growing, which mm-hmm. is really cool. But our but our team is our team is just killer. So I mean that's that's really that we look at the the culture that goes with that it ties back into we, we want people that are hungry that want to be a part of that and mm-hmm. these people are passionate about what they're doing and they're applying and their skills. In the yeah, I mean yeah. They, they know it's important and they know that that what their skills that they have and they're they're using technology and they're also we're getting feedback from the ones that are using it mm-hmm. that's making it better because again we used it here before mm-hmm. it went out. There's an, our customers aren't guinea pigs. We were our own guinea pigs. Yeah. You know, so and sometimes that sucks, but but they. But they they get that done. So I mean, that's that's a big piece of where that is. And then also just uh, just the just the heart of our family that we have. Like our mm-hmm. our motto of our family is uh, is live for another. Mm-hmm. You know, you talk about God being a part of really and faith as being really important. It's a really important part of our family. Um, and as we are, I mean, even before we even had money, you know. So one thing as we challenge and I want to talk to like the rest of your your audience is about finding ways to be able to make a difference in 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 the in, in the world or whatever you're passionate about. Right. You know, for us, it was, and before we had money, we, we did triathlons. My kids did triathlons. Before mm-hmm. I got out of shape, and I'm going to get back in shape now, I did triathlons, and so did my wife, Felicia, and so my kids are racing. We didn't want them to be about them. You know, it had to be about something else. So mm-hmm. I said, you're not racing for yourself. We're racing for another. And so every mm-hmm. time you complete a race, we're going to buy and assemble a bike together, and we're going to donate it to the Foster uh, Association. That's awesome. And so we started that, and then the rest of the triathlon group heard about it, and then they started doing it. And then they called, and then, a, then the, we found another company that restored bikes. Mm-hmm. And soon we're, were hundreds of bikes we were getting a summer. They wow. were getting and donating to foster kids. Because our goal is that as my kids are growing up, I want them to be able to if they had the, the pleasure of learning how to and the joy of riding a bike. Mm-hmm. And these kids didn't have that. You know? So it wow. was a really cool thing. You know, and, then, and then after that, then I was at a, I was at a Christian concert. I love Christian music, mm-hmm. just all kinds. But, and, and what so, do you like? Like I, I, I like song to, United or yeah, or yeah, they? those are good. And I, I also like Toby Max, really cool, oh, yeah. and King good. and Country. Uh-huh. Like there's just some, there's just awesome stuff out there. Yeah. So I was actually at a, a Toby Mac concert, and at halftime intermission, someone came out and they said that, uh, you know, this they have a the food for hungry thing. You can you can sponsor a child. You know, you can make a difference. And like, we've done this bike thing. You know, we're starting to do better in the company. Like we want to help more people. I want to help people. That's mm-hmm. my whole mission. Yeah. Live for another. And I was like, okay, well, this is cool. Like, I, I, we can help a couple of people. They should, mm-hmm. like, we, we can do this. And so, like, yeah, so, like, well, we have three kids, so let's, let's sponsor get three kids. Yeah. So we sponsor three kids. We, we write them notes. They would write us notes. We get to know them, you know, pretty good. And then our oldest one, a couple of years later, uh, they, she aged out of the program. You know, it was all food, clothes, and, you know, help them go to school. Mm-hmm. But then she still lives, lives in a country where they're doing all kinds of just terrible things to them. I'm like, did we do enough for Rebecca? Was it enough? Like she still lives there. Do we do we really change their life? Like we helped them give them a chance, but did it really was mm-hmm. it enough? You know, I was back in our church. We went to celebrate in Sioux Falls. There's an awesome church there, and uh, they started talking about adoption. And so we're like, we're like, well, I never even thought about it. But then I saw some families. You know, I thought adoption was like if you can't have kids and you needed a baby, you could help someone else and get a baby. I was so naively st- stupid about what that was. And mm-hmm. I went to a, a class, and I said, what, what, let me see what it is. God told me I need to go. 
I sat there. Actually, Alicia was gone on a on a business trip, uh, and I went by myself. I'm like, just to see if I want to, you know, get you know, get excited or, or not excited, depending on how that went. And I went there, and I'm like, just was moved by it that there's just thousands and thousands and thousands of kids, not baby newborns, but kids that don't have a home, forever home, mm-hmm. just in the system. I'm like, oh my gosh, like we we can do this. Like we, I want to, ch- we're going to change a life. And so we signed up, and she came home. Alicia, I'm like, guess what? We're gonna. We said I went to a thing in the church that said we're gonna adopt. And she's like, what? Like yeah. never talked about it before. And she's like, okay, like let's do it. You know. So we signed up, and like two weeks later, we got a call, and then there was a situation: a, a, a baby, a one year old, was going to be put into a, the, the social services system. And when they get into there, it's bad. Like so, they said if you can get down here tomorrow in southern texas and and, mm-hmm. and and get and help get um help get her before that happens um we we want you to the family said we want you to be their their family so like jumped on a plane and we went down there we're in the back bayou of texas and areas like just a fascinating story uh but uh we, we found and we adopted our, our daughter ellery um and she's nine now just amazing just a huge roller coaster ride of emotions and like and things that we learned mm-hmm. but yeah, i can't your imagine yeah, that's your nine-year-old yeah yeah, yeah I can't really imagine. Cool. Yeah, I can't imagine our family or our life without her. You mm-hmm. know, so I mean, and so I mean that was a great thing. And then, and then I was at another Christian concert. Maybe I should quit going, or I got to go to more of them. I'm not sure which one, <laughs> but we went to another Christian concert. At, uh, Chris Tomlin was he's a really cool dude. He's I like him cool. too. Yeah. And so he had they had an intermission, his thing too. And I'm sitting back there, and I was contemplating about the same thing. We had Ellery now for about six years. Mm-hmm. It has been wonderful, and she's just part of our family now. It's like. Okay, like she's just part of my family. I don't even mm-hmm. think about it anymore. I'm like, okay, so what's next? Like, you know, I, I what's the next thing? Like, we got to keep giving. I'm doing everything I can for our company, but mm-hmm. I feel like is that enough? Like, that's my that's my 50 guys, you know, yeah. to a team at the time. Uh, and so then and then uh, so then at the halftime there, they came out and then they talked about this uh, Cure International program. And I'm like, well, and I just start listening, and, and it just get just like overcame me. Like this is this is the thing I need to do. I want to impact more as many people and make a difference in this world while I'm here. Wow. And this is what we want to do as as a as a family. Mm-hmm. So we live for. I'm like, how do we do this at a bigger level? We had just got back from our um la- like learning about Lesta robots, and I'm like, we're we're going to Lesta. We're gonna start we're gonna start opening these robots, selling these robots. I'm like, man, if I can figure this out. Like I can impact and, and help and we can help more people. Mm-hmm. And then I hear about this and I'm like, holy crap, like what's cool about this program is there's there's thousands of kids across the, the world that is, that have born with a cleft palate, cephalitis, burn victims, or legs are bowed wrong. Mm-hmm. And for a fifteen hundred dollar surgery can it completely change their life. Either they're gonna die, they're gonna end up in a in a ditch, they usually get disavowed by their family, and they're just and if they live it's a horrible life. Fifteen hundred dollars. They have a com- completely changed their life and in, in the families that that's they so live crazy. in. And I'm like, that's nothing. Like, and it, so it's not like just giving money to the Red Cross. Like, there's, everyone has causes, and there's there's none of them that are better or worse than others. But I always wanted to like have a connection. Yeah. That's why I like, like when I sponsor kids. Like, I got to know like something I, that made a difference. And I knew knew the face and, and I knew a story. Mm-hmm. Right. So they pair you with uh with with a with a kid with in whatever whatever their thing is they pair them and you you donate to that whether it's ten dollars twenty dollars or the whole fifteen hundred mm-hmm. and and you can change their life forever and i'm like oh my god that is what we want to do like we mm-hmm. want to be a part of that and i said you know being cooler we're going to find a way that whenever time we sell a robot we're going to pair that with with a, with a child and donate that on our, on our own end wow. and so everyone in our company can be part of this and that we're going to start pairing these together so that's a program we're going to be launching this year. This so isn't cool. like customer don't have to pay for this. Like our, our no. prices are, are good no yeah. matter what. It's just no, on our end. This is your, your it's standard. That, that, this is your mission. Yeah, it's a stronger it's standard. We want to standard. help more people. You know, want to help more people. And I want everyone to be able to be a part of something that's bigger than themselves. We're not just building a part. We're not just building a robot. Mm-hmm. We're changing our, our industry. We're helping make sure that we can be sustained. And we're making a big impact on the world. Wow. And we're changing people's lives. So that is, uh, that's, what, that's, that's where my heart's at. You know. Yeah. Uh, well, so. number one, um, you got a beautiful family. Thank Your you. wife's amazing. She's incredible. Um, you guys have a super cool company. I think it's cool having this podcast. We're going to do a lot of them, but having this one now is you guys are blowing up where you guys will be in, you know, two years. Yeah. Um, your front end side of your company, the sales division, your back out, your backside is completely built. You're selling a lot of uh, robots organically. Yeah. The sales division side, guys, he's looking for a couple men or women super hungry, super fired up. You can yeah. obviously fill his heart through the podcast. People that 
you know, believe in his mission, who wants to change, you know, business owners' lives, yeah. companies' lives, and believes in technology. Technology is the future. And um, it's crazy. This is an opportunity now that if you're watching this, you're like, dude, I've been waiting for some badass. You can make a lot of money, but you can be a part of something really cool and around a great mm -hmm. organization and around like like-minded individuals. So it's yeah. amazing. Um, you guys can go down the description box. You guys can click on that link. You guys can answer some information, send over a 60 second video and he'll reach out to you within 24 hours. This is an opportunity of a lifetime if you wanna join the, the sales division. Uh, super important. If this is something that you feel like, man, like this is something that could help my company. Like this is amazing. Yeah. I want you guys to go and make sure you go to his website. Make sure you click on, you know, ask a question. I think you said you request information. Yeah, request anything. Uh -huh. and, and you guys can ask any questions you want. And then um, where do they find you on social media? I know you don't use it a lot, but if somebody wants to DM you and ask you a question. We're going to start. Like we, we have it open. Like I have a strong, I have a podcast channel called a Str uh, Manufacturing a Stronger Standard uh -huh. where I talk about things like this as well. Where, and I'm where, the host of that where, one. Where, so. where do they find that? Uh, just anywhere, Spotify, uh, Apple, wherever so, you get so your So if you Spotify. go to Spotify, you yep. type in what? Yep, Manufacturing a Stronger Standard manufacturing a stronger standard yep yep okay. i got a podcast channel on there and then good i love that so people can find yeah. out more information yeah. as well yep and then we also yeah we're on we're on linkedin instagram facebook degees corporation less to usa both of them are on there mm -hmm. and they both will link in and then i'm gonna start i'm gonna I'm, you're inspiring me man i'm gonna i'm gonna yeah, get out gonna there now you. Like, this, we're gonna start well, this going is huge. this is the yeah. future yeah i always tell people like like you gotta it's predictive analytics like you can predict where the future is going you can predict how companies are going to scale and grow. You know, you can predict like, like how things become more efficient. Like you can predict, predict all this. And the fact that you're ahead of this and especially being in the States, mm -hmm. you know, like getting ahead, you're an early adopter in this. Yep. Like, dude, the future is so insane. So if somebody yeah. wants to be a part of something really big picture, this is an amazing time. Um, but meeting Derek, I just wanted you guys to, to get an opportunity to see him, meet him. You heard a story about, you know, adopting his daughter, him and his wife, how quick they're drawn to just doing good things. You know, I always say we're in an era of the biggest shortage of leaders in the history of time, from families to businesses, just everywhere. I mean, the homes need them, families need them. When I see them, I'm like, dude, like, we got to share this person. So I hope you guys found some value today. Um, you know, I want you guys to make sure you connect with Derek if you want to. Just want to say that every time we get together, I meet the most incredible people. And I just want to tell you, my, my goal in 2024 is like, I was like, God, put me around, you know, some better people, you know, better, better women for my wife, you know, better kids for my children, you know. So that's why I like when I meet these people, I want to share them with you guys. Um, there's always opportunities, which I think is super cool. Um, I think in life, you know, like everybody's like one opportunity away from a brand new life. So if you're watching this, you may be like, dude, my opportunity needs to be with this. That's amazing. If that's not you, I hope that you found something that he said today that you could take back into your own life and increase your life or help someone else. So, man, I appreciate you yeah. being a great leader, Thanks guys. A lot, man. Appreciate We're going to be doing a lot of podcasts work. with him so you guys will learn as we go. Yeah, and by I hope way, you want to follow us, man, because we whether whether you want to be a part of it or you just want to follow it, we're going we're gonna to change the industry. We're going to change this country. Yeah. And we're going to do big things, and it's going to be it's going to be a wild ride. I know he is. I love it. <laughs> so, guys, watch the journey, and if you want to join him, you know how to do it. Love you guys. Have a blessed day, and we'll see you in the next podcast. Let's go. Hey guys, I just want to tell you the true one percenters, you made it till the end of the video. Do me a favor, share it with a friend that wants to go to another level. Make sure you like the video, comment below so I know who you are. Set your notifications and then subscribe to the channel. We got daily sales training videos dropping. I'll see you soon.